Hey tubers and welcome back to another video install. This one featuring programming at the Soundtrack Tsunami with the uh, Dakota Pro. For uh, my DCC hardware I use the North Coast Engineering Power Pro and I interface with my PC laptop here in front of you via a USB interface and that interface plugs directly into the uh, DIN port using an RJ cable. So super simple uh, hardware via USB from the PC to the uh, DIN port on the uh, on any type of your uh, RJ outlets or inputs on the uh, Power Pro. So what you have here in front of you is the uh, basic screen on the Decoder Pro and I'm going to flip down here to the general roster and the really nice thing that I like about utilizing the Decoder Pro is, is that I can program on the main and use my NCE Pro Crab throttle to have real-time results so rather than tabulating through the uh, Pro, Crab, Pro Cab's uh, CV menus I program the CV using Decoder Pro and then I use the throttle for speed steps ringing the bell horn and I see everything in real time so there's it's super efficient and also I have a record right in front of me of the changes that I've made to the decoder I then save the file and if I have similar engines um, I can simply uh, copy that file into another uh, decoder and voila so there's no pages notebooks uh, to keep and if I do have particular notes on a particular engine uh, I can keep that right in front of me so everything is really simple and really neat and in one convenient space so today uh, we're gonna be uh, working with uh, uh, Intermountain uh, ES44 5358 and I've already got the uh, window up but anyways what you would do is you would simply highlight that engine that you want and then we'll scroll down here to the bottom right and you would simply click on that program button and it would bring up the next screen which I'm going to flash up here in front of you here. So I've already got that screen open and going from the top left across you can see various files that you can open and this first screen contains all of your basic information about the locomotive and you can see I've given identifying features going down and then comment that I've made is that I've already done a speaker modification to this locomotive so I took out the junk uh, OEM speaker and I replaced it with a medium oval in the rear and then a small oval speaker in the front so I've got some uh, nice sound uh, coming out of this locomotive the next thing that you're gonna do is you're just gonna go to the basic information and you can do all of your programming on this screen and I've given it a long address here and then down here towards the uh, bottom of the screen that's where the when you push that right changes on sheet that is what actually will then perform the programming so you make your changes up above and then you come down here and you push uh, right changes on sheet and voila so going to uh, sound up here you would simply click on your sound and for this particular locomotive um, I've given it manual notching so these various controls right here are ones that I would change so for instance um, I've got it under manual control and I don't want the locomotive to do anything until I actually start it up it's kind of funny that if uh, 
you push your uh, speed steps and the uh, locomotive goes back and forth. And again, if you want to make changes to that, you would push the right changes button. And so let's kind of give you a little sample of that. So right here, I've got a Holden uh, K5H programmed into the locomotive. And then I'm just simply going to change it to a Nathan. Right change. Boom. Change it back to the Nathan K3. Holden. Go to the K5. So you can see the changes right there. Instantaneous, no fuss, no muss. Next thing we're going to take a look at, guys, is doing the sound levels. And on this one, you can see the slider controls. So your master volume up uh, located towards the upper left. And then kind of see how I've done how I've done my setup I've done the uh, air horn at max I don't particularly like my bells loud they kind of grate on my nerves after a while so I tend to set those back down you can make that louder or less And then you have your various other sound levels and you it's just all slider control. And then I'll use my throttle for my NCE just to simply turn that off. So here on the EQ page, you have various sliders. I've set it to user adjustable. The first two sliders I completely cut out. Uh, those are uh, low, uh, low frequency uh, sound waves, and if you, even though they're inaudible to our ear, using this, these very small speakers, they still, if you have them turned all the way up or midway up, even though we can't hear them, they're going to cut down on the efficiency of the speaker. So I want to have my uh, my other sliders though adjusted to what I think sound right. So I'll kind of give you uh, some real time sound. So the first, uh, or the third slider, I'm just going to slide that back down. Write the change. Not, not terribly noticeable. This one should make a significant difference. Certainly takes some of the uh, lower end out. So I want to put that back in there. We'll cut this one down a little bit. And again, that's really taking some of the uh, bassiness out of the uh, sound, taking some of the richness out. Add it back in. Make the change below. So this one right here, the uh, four kilohertz, the one on the very bottom, I find this one makes one of the biggest differences overall on our uh, sound uh, on the tsunami. So. Right now I have it uh, boosted all the way up. I'm going to cut it right back and we'll see what it sounds like. So that really takes that higher end uh, frequency wave out and you get a much flatter sound. So we're going to put that back in all the way up. Significantly different. You can also uh, write uh, reverbs in there. I have a uh, slight uh, delay on my engine, so that way when I'm running uh, with two of these locomotives, I don't get that syncopation or that kind of blending of sounds that you'll you'll get from an exact same setup. Um, that delay just 
gets rid of that uh, that syncopation. So the next thing, guys, that I uh, program are uh, doing uh, the basic speed and speed tables. Um, I I usually always use my speed tables for programming on these particular locomotives. Uh, I am going to engage the uh, speed table button and then I've got this locomotive set to an exponential curve meaning that on the lower end of the uh, speed steps uh, I have much less voltage applied and then it curves upwards um, as you uh, go up the uh, speed tables. Uh, the other nice thing and this is a shout out to uh, Greg down in Australia he did a nice job explaining it on one of his videos is, is that you can change the uh, forward and uh, reverse uh, trim buttons and what that does is that changes the voltage applied to each speed step so you have your curve and then these trims right here uh, change the voltage so you have uh, percentages uh, taken out so normally it's 128 which equals zero I have 70 so that means um, I have less voltage uh, going to my individual speed steps on the curve and that way I get really super nice slow starts and stops uh, the other thing that you can do guys and that I always do is I change my function outputs uh, simple uh, checking of tabs here uh, for example um, I've remapped uh, functions 5, 6, 7 F and 9 so for function uh, 5 um, that makes my engines throttle up uh, function 9 um, I have uh, my engine throttle down uh, function 6 is where I do my dynamics uh, function 7 is my uh, train brake uh, function 4 is my uh, uh, cab lights and that are excuse me my uh, ditch lights on these locomotives and then I've got the cab lights and headlights set up automatically and you can set all that stuff up um, in the uh, tsunami lighting tab here and then uh, so going through this kind of uh, left to right you set up your uh, headlights over here and then depending upon where you have your function outputs uh, you get uh, function 5, function 6, and then we'll expand that out a little bit. And then you can also get uh, uh, sub, uh, uh, sub lighting effects, um, FX uh, 5B and 6B. Respect. Uh, automatic sound control for those who want the uh, horn to uh, or bell to whistle for uh, grade crossings or for forward or reverse movements you can have all, all that stuff set up automatically on the uh, sound on the automatic sound and this is where I like to get busy a lot of the time so you'll see right here on this side this is all of your uh, motor control and basically your PIDs and this can get a little uh, wiggly so to say uh, and by that uh, if you've got a motor that doesn't run very smoothly or it uh, pulsates um, usually you can get rid of that uh, pulsation by going in and changing your values um, on your uh, KP and your KI your BMF right here uh, this is also another um, value that I change often so I you I tend to run uh, lower numbers I usually have uh, 120 dialed in and I as you can see here this is 150 and 20 that was originally 30 and and uh, 25 respectively as it came from the factory and this locomotive uh, pulsated at very low speeds it would you know speed up slow down like on speed step three or four so by giving it a higher number and again this is all done by uh, trial and error finding which numbers work the best um, that it took me about five to ten minutes 
to uh, to find the combination of numbers, but going back and using my old uh, or going back and doing it the old way where I would uh, tabulate between uh, CV screens on the uh, Pro Cab, it used to take me so long and now it's like literally minutes. So rather than spending an hour and writing stuff down and you know going back and forth, now I just simply you know change the number right here, see it in, in full time as I'm programming it on the main. So that's a brief overview, guys, of uh, of Decoder Pro. Uh, again, super powerful program. Works like a charm um, for Soundtrack Tsunami. I do not recommend uh, using Decoder Pro for uh, QSI. Uh, QSI has their own proprietary um, program suite, and it's set up specifically for QSI. So anyways, guys... Uh, Super powerful program. Um, that USB interface uh, for your PC to the uh, to the NCE. They run like uh, I think between 40 and 50 bucks, um, and it's uh, one of the if you're going to be setting up uh, multiple decoders, it is the way to go, no doubt about it. So uh, thanks for watching, guys. If you got questions, uh, let me know. I'll try to address them. Have a good day, guys. Later.